Hi, good afternoon. Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Day with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hi, y'all. Happy Friday. Gee whiz. Okay. I don't know about you guys. Are you happy it's Friday, Liz? I am happy it's Friday, but only because I have extra work time on the weekend. So, yay. Different type of work. Yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to working on weekends, but it's different. It's Absolutely. Like yeah, it is. It's more like fun. More like. <laughs> Why is that? I mean, honestly, well, I never quite. It's something a little, little off by that, isn't it? Well, I can tell you why it is for me. So for me, it's because I can be doing other stuff in the background. I, so a little personal here, but I don't have to wear a bra because <laughs> I'm working. And I've got on my, my most comfortable clothes. I can jump up, grab a snack. You know, it's, it's just more, more casual. I, I do three hours of work in nine hours of time where in, on a normal work day, I'm working the opposite. I'm trying to get nine hours of work done in three hours of time. So it, it just feels really relaxing that I can do however much I want, you know? I don't have an agenda, so all that, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, Sarah, you look forward to it too? I feel like it's kind of a normal thing that we all kind of do. It, it feels good to work. I think it's different when you got, what, Sarah, don't you have like three kids? I wouldn't think it would sound good if you had three kids. I have no kids. It's easy on the weekend. But uh, hi guys, hi everybody. Oh, oh, Amelia, you're from New Jersey. I didn't know that. Hi, I don't know how I missed that before. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. You're always here. And Dawn says same thing. Yep, normal for her. I have to mute and pull up on my phone so that I can answer some short, little, easy stuff on here, Tom. Yeah. So, you know, the good news is the uh, House of Representatives passed the uh, additional funding for the SBA funds. There's uh, $310 billion for, for PPP. And that's going to go out pretty quick because uh, the banks have been, most banks have been processing our applications since, you know, last Thursday in, in anticipation of these money's getting, money's getting here. So, if you haven't gotten your PPP funds yet, I mean, I don't want to go as far as to saying that it's going to show up on, you know, show up, you know, next week, or you're going to get a, you know, a call, you know, on Monday. But you, we, I would expect that that things should start happening pretty quick next week. Um, there's about sixty billion dollars for our EIDL, which is is kind of cool. So, you know, all of that should be flowing through, flowing through next week, which uh, be. Greatly appreciated for most of us, if not all of us, right? Yeah, no kidding. For me, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we actually have a question here, uh, real quick, Tom. Carolina, Carolina says um, she works under a DBA. Would I be able to get funding? Sure. You say DBA, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, whatever you. You know, your legal structure might have some bearing on that, but even if you're a sole proprietor, I think that you can certainly, you know, qualify for, for these SBA funds. I would, uh, you know, contact my bank and, and, and do something on the PPP side. And, um, you know, I haven't actually checked on, on, on the SBA website. I, I heard that they took the EIDL applications down. Yeah. They went out of funds, but they, do you know if that's true, Liz? I heard the same thing. Yeah, I don't. I, I think they're coming back, though, right? I would, yeah, uh, they would, it would have to with this extra sixty billion because the first tranche only had ten billion for yeah. for that. God, what a world we live in! Only ten billion, but um, <laughs> so I mean, it's 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 a, it's a material amount mo more than, than than the first time. So um, I would think they would have to put that back up. So if you haven't done it, I'd be. Uh, I'd be checking now, actually, the SBA website to see if uh, anything is there. Come back on. Yep. And I don't know when Dawn says that she, um, that the SBA site says it's not accepting. I don't know when she checked, but check again. And if you still don't, if it's still, check over the weekend, check on Monday. Uh, I, I would I would keep looking because it. I, I can't imagine that the reason why they gave the 60 more is because that's how many 
I mean, I guess I could be. Maybe that's how many had already come through that they couldn't fund. That's the only thinking there. You know, I wouldn't, you know, you can't completely rule that out, but I would have to think that that there's additional funds in there for people who haven't applied. Yeah, it, it seems to make sense because it, it got shut down so quickly. Oh, well, Dawn says she checked five minutes ago. All right, well, check over the weekend. I'm looking now, you know, it's, they move stuff around here so much. They're not sticking, if it's here, they're not sticking it in my face. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's not good. They're making it that much harder to find. So at any rate, you guys keep keep checking. If you haven't been funded and uh, if, if you know that you didn't apply, keep, keep trying, check over the weekend. I was surprised at how much work is being done over the weekend. Um, tons, tons of stuff is being done over the weekend. They're not shutting down right now. They're just keeping everything running. So it seems like 8 p.m. is kind of a little bit of a cutoff for a few things, but 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, but not, not, not much more than that. They're still working on the weekends. Uh, Marsha says that she took the uh, GBAC training. I'm curious, Marsha, how'd you like that? I know quite a few people have taken that that GVAC training, and yay to you guys! Good, good for you that you're getting more and more training. Um, I, I think that's excellent. There's um, a lot of different opportunities. We we have some opportunities also that we're going to be talking about that I think um, make sense right now. This is the time, right? Take advantage of all of the stuff that's coming along because we're not always going to have these opportunities. And right now you have a little bit more time than you normally do to be able to do some of this stuff. I mean, one of the things that I'm always thinking about is, have you guys ever noticed that this, you either have time or you have money. Time, money. How often do you have time and money at the same time? It doesn't really work that way. So when you have time, get what you can. If you have money, Get what you can, right? Do do it. it. Buy what you can when you have money, and then take advantage of it when you have the time. <laughs> um, have you done the? Yeah, you know, I've been meaning to do the GBAC training. I think that would be really fun. And you know, you're so dumb. <laughs> no, I mean I do, and 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 I think about you know. I might, I might, I might ask Sharon Grammer if I could kind of tag around on. I'm, I would like to put on like the whole Gus, Ghostbuster thing and <laughs> go in and you know start electro. What you call it? Gunning. You could gun and you could fog. You don't yeah. have electrostatic spare. The pros call it. You know, you gun it. It's like I would do <laughs> yeah. the gun. I want to do the gunning. <laughs> with, with the respirator. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to do that every day. I think I do. I don't know if I can handle that every day, but I'd like I'd like to say that I did that. So obviously everything that we've talked about says you have to have the proper training for that. And I would want to have that too. But I think that would be be a uh, interesting experience. Uh, so I like what Marsha says. Liked it. Everything is getting redundant. You know, you start hearing some of this stuff over and over again. Um, I washed my hands when I was done. <laughs> uh, easy. Uh, it's interesting. Again, good to give employees. Yep, more stuff to give employees. Um, Amelia wants to know where she goes to take the GBAC. Um, is it? It's, I, on, it's on the um, on the cleaning business today. Uh, coronavirus uh, downloads page. We'll look at that at, at the end of the discussion, but. There's a link there that takes you right to all of the ISSA training resources for COVID-19, and it's on that page. Uh, 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 Amelia, also, every time you call, they tell you you need to wait. Um, I, I know people that called as many as seven times and then finally got their portal number on the eighth time. So, <laughs> Bridget, <laughs> I love it. Bridget, sorry she's late, Tom. <laughs> That's oh. good. That's it. I feel you like you ask Bridget. We were late too. <laughs> we've never not been late. I, I think we've been on time one time. Bridget, you're but, always here before us, so. <laughs> That's but, funny. You know, you know, I've been like juggling a lot of balls here lately, and I was getting ready to get set up for today's Facebook Live, and saw that I never set up today's meeting. So, 
wouldn't even let me start it at five o'clock because you have to do it like 10 minutes in advance. So today's meeting technically on Facebook says it started at 5.05. So we scheduled it late. First time we've done that. Yeah. So I can't see everybody on my phone or, and I can't see anything when we're on the screen, but every once in a while it'll show me that somebody is watching. And right now it just said that Bill Gelderman is watching. I haven't seen Bill on before. So hi, Bill. I haven't seen you in a while. Bill's been, with us, Bill's been with us at least one other time. Oh, nice. Yeah, my screen doesn't usually show who's on. Just every once in a while, it'll pop somebody on there for me. And Bill's the lucky one today. So good to see you, Bill. Haven't haven't talked to you in a while. I actually miss talking to you. Bill, we're going to start cleaning homes in Atlanta week after next. We're going to start ramping it up again. So we'll, 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 we'll be seeing you here in a couple of weeks. Hi, Dusty. I just saw that you requested to be my friend on Facebook. Thank you. I accepted it, I think, uh, last night or early today. So I got to check you out just a little bit. It sounded weird, but <laughs> I got to feel like I was saying hi and getting to know you a little bit. So hi. Uh, no, not a steamer. As a charge to the disinfectant, looks like a toy gun. Yep, that's what the um, um, electrostatic sprayers are. Uh, Tom, can you tell us anything more about why are these electrostatic sprayers better? What do they do? Hey, Mary. They they put uh, an electrical charge in the uh, mist that comes out of them that makes them magnetic. So the, the mist that comes out of there, most misters will just mist and gravity, the, the force of it coming out in gravity will lay the mist down on whatever it falls on or, or hits. The electrostatic sprayers have an electrical charge that like, does like an, a magnetic thing. Like you can have a sphere, you can have a doorknob and spray it in this direction and it'll stick to the back because of the magnetic charge. As soon as the mist gets close to, to whatever surface that you're, you're shooting, it'll just kind of cover it. So it, short answer, well, too late for a short answer. The short <laughs> Shorter. The shorter answer is it sticks a whole lot better and covers the surface a whole lot better. Okay, that, that makes good sense. That's why the big push for the electrostatic sprayers. I've had a lot of people asking me. So yeah. we hear a lot about the different types of um, misters and sprayers and electrostatic sprayers, foggers. Is there like a place that can tell us what these different things are? Are these just, um, are they, is there a definition? Like, is there a clear definition between say a mister and a fogger? Different amounts of, of chemical or products I, that are coming out? I don't know if there's a an agreed upon standard. Not to say that there isn't, I'm, 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 I'm not aware, but the, Actual uh, aerialization in a mister is bigger than a fogger. Fogger is a is a much finer uh, particulate come or the the um, aerialization out of a fogger is much finer. Foggers oftentimes use heat. They're used in um, like a lot of restoration work, if you're doing odor mitigation, for instance, you put certain products in it and it it makes a fog, whereas a mist yeah. is a mist. I mean, if you really think about it, fog and mist are two different things and mist oh, yeah, is heavier. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, I was just wondering if there is like n numbers connected to that, you know, <laughs> this, this size mm -hmm. uh, droplets or this amount or something like that. Um, so Marsha is saying that the GVAC training can get you that info. So that that's good. So right? they actually get into like the, the micron size of a uh, fog particle versus um, of a mister. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially, I mean, I think it's really, I don't think, I know it's really important information when you can find different sprayers from any, I think the lowest price I've seen on something is like $75. And I think the highest I've seen now is what, two grand? Mm -hmm. So you really need to know what the heck it is that you're buying. Yeah. Fog's finer than a mist, makes sense. Yep, mist is heavier. Yep, makes sense. I mean, if, if you really think about it, 
a spray bottle that we use every day with our window cleaner in it is a form of a mister, right? I mean, yeah. there's a whole there's a whole spectrum there of how fine the uh, aerialization is. Yeah, yeah, all of, all of that makes sense. Um, I'm just trying to wrap my head around like different uses for different things. When I, I guess from what you said about the electrostatic sprayer, though, that just seems like the superior choice, pretty much regardless of what you're doing. I guess unless it's an empty building. Well, even 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 that though, if I'm if I'm fogging or misting, I'm not getting the back sides of handles. I'm not getting the back sides of doorknobs as well as you know, three-dimensional things, the electrostatic does a, does a better job. And even on the front, it actually sticks better. I've seen demos at, at, at ISSA. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, you can turn the electro, some of them you can turn the electrostatic feature on and off. So they'll take like two identical objects and spray it one without the electrostatic and the other one with the electrostatic. And it's obvious that the electrostatic has a lot more of the cleaning agent on it. And if you're applying a disinfectant and the whole idea is to have a longer dwell time and to keep it moist longer, then the more of that stuff that sticks to it, because you got the other thing you got going on is vertical surfaces that if you just spray it, it's going to run off, right? The electrostatic tends to hold on to the surface more rather than, than than run off i guess i'm not really understanding the purpose then uh why why would you ever want to turn it off what would oh, be i don't know but it makes for a good demo <laughs> it, it seems odd I mean, it doesn't seem like you would ever want to turn it turn it off debbie baker is talking about um what do we think about this um sounds like a multi-purpose sprayer no, no clue here. I, I, I don't have an idea. I, it sounds like from what Marcia said, going to the GBAC training would be able to give you some good information on that. Yeah, that's a multi-purpose sprayer at Harbor Freight. I might see if I can, I don't know if I can click on that. I know I can't. No. Um, electrostatic, is it easy and safe to use for residential cleaning, Tom? Well, it, it's it's a it's it's a device that applies an an agent, uh, and I guess it's really a function of what you're putting in it. Um, I personally have never used one. I've seen them demonstrated. Um, they don't appear to be terribly complicated. The whole safety part of it is is a, is a function. I mean, there's training, and you are taking something and you're misting and you're putting it in the air. So you've, you know, you got the whole PP, you know, E thing that you've got to be thinking about. And part of it's what you're putting in it. You know, remember we talked about disinfectants and reading the label on the back and making sure you're following the label that goes double for anything that you're putting in the mister or cause, you know, if the product is meant to be used in a spray bottle and just squirt it and you know, dwell for 10 minutes, you might be uh, violating the whole federal FIFRA thing by, by, by putting it in a, in, a, in a mister. Or you might be violating that if you suggest that you inject it into people and see what you remember. Uh, you didn't uh, did you, did you hear that? I did. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. Do you want to go political? I don't no, I'm not getting political. This has nothing to do with politics. This has everything to do with follow the manufacturer's instructions, read the label. And I don't, you know, it, it makes this isn't political. This is a matter of anybody that's going to get mad that Tom just said that. Just remember, not political. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, think about it. Though. There's like 330 some odd million people in this country, and some of them are going to hear that and not understand it was a joke. I understand it was a joke, but anyway. Yeah. I'm good. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Okay, moving on. Sorry. Uh, that's okay. for the record. <laughs> you know, some people are laughing. We have a few little smiley laughing face emoticons, Tom. So, okay. so that's, 
That's nobody's your okay. Mad at, nobody's <laughs> mad at me. Uh, no, uh, they're all laughing. You're fine. We're getting love. We're getting little hearts. Thanks, you guys. We need a little love every now and again. Um, but Bridget does have a good question here, Tom. Um, something that we haven't talked about at all. She'd like to know your thoughts on disinfectants with polymers, kind of like the consumer product Microban that claims to disable pathogens for up to 30 days. Have you heard about these? Yeah. And uh, they're, they're efficacious. And, you know, they, there's there's various variations. I mean, some is, is, is made in the manner where you can apply to a surface. A lot of surfaces actually have that incorporated and in, in, in built into it. And in a broader sense, there's a lot of metals and stuff like copper, for instance, uh, does a, a good job of, of, of killing uh, pathogens and, and, and microbials on its own. And more and more like copper top tables you find in, in, in some healthcare facilities because it's they're easier to to disinfect because just the, the nature of, of the material does that. I know toys and playground material and stuff like that. A lot, I mean, a lot of stuff more and more has the microband built in. And so, so you're pro, pro microband. I'm, I'm, I'm pro microband. Okay. okay, good. So hope that helped a little bit, Bridget. I, I think most people are. Um, I, I did hear a, a little bit of a rant from somebody in one of the groups that I didn't really understand. So I'm glad to hear that you're pro microband, Tom. That, that makes me feel more comfortable. Um, so we're getting some, some comments about the employees and we're having some employee issues um, trying to pull people back to work. Uh, Linda says, unemployment rant, all but three ladies are coming back to work. They're afraid, but one of them is contacting my other ladies to encourage them not to come to work, sit home, get their unemployment, um, and that I am doing this to get the money for me, and they should let me hang. Grr. So, uh, what, what are you what are you thinking, Tom? What are you, uh, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of wondering what, what what you're thinking. Um, you know, technically, if you tell the uh, unemployment agency that you offered someone their job and they're not coming back, then they could lose their unemployment. I guess you know it can get complicated though. If somebody comes back and they're hostile, that's not really the the, the outcome that you want either. Um, we've talked about strategies where you do, you know, if you're in a state where you can do the work share and maybe work them part time and still let them get their federal uh, unemployment bonus because they're getting a little bit of unemployment from the state. I mean, that's an option. If you have your PPP monies, you've got something to play with where you might be able to give them a uh, coronavirus pay differential coronavirus bonus for for eight weeks that would, you know, make it more more comparable and especially if you're making it clear that that's where that money is going that the money's not just going to you it's going to them right that you you also will see a benefit but they they should also see a benefit there's no reason why they wouldn't um i had something else i wanted to say about that let me see if somebody else so kelly post in the MMA group about this. I think we had a couple of other people that were dealing with this and I, I've got a couple of strategies that we can work on together in there. Um, let's see, Rochelle, same people who won't, oh, <laughs> she's talking about the group, <laughs> the joke, the, the president's joke, uh, offer them their job back. If they refuse, they quit and replace them. Um, yeah, that, that's actually a, a, a a strategy for sure. Um, Dusty wants to know about at will employment laws. Yep, you can let them go for anything. Um, oh, one other thing that I wanted to point out, she said that the people were afraid. The CARES Act specifically calls out that people cannot use fear as a reason to not work. They actually, it's printed out that fear, they can't not work because they're scared. So, you actually have um, something in writing from the government to to post for people. Uh, again, going back to Tom's point, right? It doesn't help you to bring in people who are scared or angry to be sending out in, into other people's homes. But there's ways around it. 
you just have to um, you have to communicate a really really strong message what is how how is this for the benefit of all including you yes no no doubt that you are also going to benefit but so are they and so are the clients how how is this a win 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 I mean, a lot of times we're talking about just having a win-win, but gosh, this is an opportunity for a win-win-win. Uh, push that angle, right? How are we all going to win for a change? How amazing this can be for all of us. And you just sort of have to shift that narrative. It, it, you can't, a lot of times you can't just tell people what they should think, but sometimes you can. Listen, this is how we need to think, and here's the reason why. Uh, okay, Rochelle says, if you don't take the job offer now, it will be given to someone else and you won't be asked to come back once your unemployment runs out. Absolutely, um, that that is a can be a true statement. Um, yeah, chances are good if you have people that don't want to work right now because of the money, they're not really concerned about where they're gonna get a job later. Those are the people that are thinking, Screw you and your job. That's probably not a nice thing to say. Um, no. oh, I'm with you. I know. I'm sorry, everybody. That's, that's as bad as, that is about as edgy that, as Liz gets, though. Yeah, I don't really say things worse than that. Well, I do say the P word every once in a while. I get in trouble for that. But I, I don't say that very often either. Um, um, I, 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 well, never mind. We're, we don't even talk about me. Uh, yeah, Tom's been dropping the F bomb earlier today. I was like, you're a little bit stressed out there, Tom. I'm dropping that bomb a couple of times. And I've had a lot. I'm stressed. It's been a long week. Day. I've huh. gotten. I had to get 12 hours of work done in like six hours, and I had a computer blow up in the middle of trying to pull something together to share with you guys today. And oh. did Alien just absolutely bite it? No, Alien is okay. This was a this was a desktop computer. You know, Janice is the smart person that makes me look good and she was like putting something together for me that is, is part of what we're talking about today and so i had to go into work and grab another computer and bring it home and you know how that goes yeah i do and you know you don't live close either no. I, I only live seven minutes from from my office but you're closer to 30 and sometimes 40 minutes right and then we have, and then we have this problem, a roof leak issue, and it rained really, really hard yesterday. And Anthony was uh, taking care of that, and he was there, so he had to tell me about it. So, well, you know, if you if you haven't met Anthony, nicest guy on the planet, likes to talk, likes likes to give you the details. So, yeah, yeah. especially when you got stuff going on, I can see that being a little bit stressful. Well, um, just keep thinking that. <laughs> Dusty says, bless your sailor mouth, Tom. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm working on it. It's not sailor mouth. I don't have a sailor mouth. Tom does, though. Uh, he used to, he used to uh, say this one word all the time that used to just crack me up. Uh, but we should probably not get into that on Facebook. <laughs> but it was no, funny. No. He, he would just drop the bee bomb every once in a while. That was funny. Um, Linda, my plan is to do the Corona bonus, uh, the ladies, at the end of the eight weeks. I told her I am hiring, and she may not have a job when she is ready to come back. I do want to report her. That is anger talking. <laughs> that is anger talking. I had told her about the bonus opportunity. To my face, that is great. Behind my back, she said I am lying. Okay, rant over. Yeah, it, it's tough when... Um, when you're trying to do a good thing too, and people just aren't trusting you and they're not believing in you, uh, that is hard, especially when you feel like, I'm, I'm guessing in your case, Linda, you've probably gone out of your way multiple times to be a good boss and, and to, to show that you are a good employer. And so then when you're in a situation and you're kind of counting on people to be as loyal as you've been, it's, it's disconcerting and it's kind of, it's a little bit of a letdown. Um, my my comment to you is don't let it get you down because there's always going to be those people there, and they have their own struggles. On the on the flip side, when they go home, oh, how many people are telling them all of these bad things, and they're not they haven't been at work and they haven't been exposed to what you've been doing. So it's easy for them 
to get sucked into this negative mindset. A lot of people are in this negative mindset right now, you guys. So, you know, keep that in your mind and see if you can work with them and try to get them around to your awesome way of thinking and how you can be helpful. Maybe there's something you can do instead of waiting until the end of the eight weeks. Maybe you can do a little something up front to get somebody started, to get people started. I, I don't know if that's possible with what you're dealing with. But is there is there some sort of an incentive that you can use up front and then also something that gets done on the end um, just to help them get over that negative hump that a lot of people are dealing with right now? Uh, I know we're all going to be having to deal with this and we're all going to be looking for the, some strategies for how to reward our people and how to best use these monies. But remember that you do have them two and a half times payroll, to a lot of money that is available that you can be giving to people. Kelly says, thank you for ranting. That makes me feel better that there are others going through a similar situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, Kelly. Lots of people are going to be going through this, you guys. Lots and lots and lots of people. This is not going to be a, a one-off. It's not just Linda's company or Kelly's company. I would be shocked if I don't have some people that are, are going through this. I'll, I'll be surprised. It's going to be hard. It's going to be some work. Because people are dealing with uh, a lot of negativity. So uh, keep keep your heads up, y'all. Oh, Amelia, too. Same thing. Yeah. I, I, I think it's just the, the status quo. I know a lot of companies that have really good, strong cultures that are dealing with, with some of this stuff already. So don't don't let it um, weigh you down. Don't. Don't think of it in terms of you, something wrong with you, anything that you're doing wrong. It's just one more thing that's going on. It's COVID-19. One more thing that needs to be managed. So huh, that's all I got for you right now. Otherwise, I could, you know me, I could ramble forever about that and dealing with your employees. So, Tom, we got some new, we're, we're um, tight on time today. We want to make sure we get out of here. It's Friday. I told everybody I'm going to try and get you out of here by 6 o'clock. So it, it is really pretty outside. I don't know if you can kind of see that or not. Um, Probably not. Right, right. But, you know, right. So you still want to get a little bit of fishing in tonight, right? Oh, that's the plan. All that right. The plan. Well, then. So we're going to talk to you guys um, about some stuff well three things or three yeah, things. a couple a couple of things here let me uh I'm gonna talk about the covid training uh tom's gonna talk a little bit about how we are going to try and give you guys a break on um on the price if you have more people in your company so if you have a bigger company get a little bit pay a little bit less and well, actually, if you have over 50 companies, so if you have a really big company, yeah. you're going to get about a 50% break. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, we, we had people asking if I've got multiple people in my company, can we do discounts? And we are limited by the technology we're using at the moment. In time, we'll probably find another platform to uh, administer the program. But at the moment, we got to play the hand that we're dealt. We, we, we did this kind of quickly because we, we, we saw the need and felt that if we took three months to pull all this together, then it really wouldn't be uh, helpful to people in the time frame that, that that help was needed. So because of that, we have some limitations with the technology, which limits us in terms of, you know, how we can do pricing and how we can do discounts. But uh, we put our heads together and came up with, with a way that we could do this. And the, the method that we would do this would be there's we have a store on the modern cleaning website that uh, I don't know we sell protein vacuum cleaners and ladybugs and and and, and, and some other things um, we're gonna add the ability to buy uh, seats to buy to buy uh, yeah, individual seats for our covid 19 class off of off of that storefront. And you'll you'll go to uh, modernclean.com. You'll go to the store, and this isn't in place yet, by the way. We're going to be working on that and getting it in place sometime this weekend. And when it is in place, we'll we'll post that in all our Facebook groups that you guys are familiar with. So so you'll see it. But um, 
anything from six and up, there can be there will be uh, discount pricing, and uh, you know, like if it's six or more, it's like ten percent off. If it's sixteen to twenty five, it's all the way down to thirty. That's like twenty percent. Uh, twenty six to fifty is down to twenty five, and if it's a big company, fifty or more, it's uh, it's like half price, and. The way it would work would be you go to Modern Cleaning, you pick the number of, of, of seats that you want, it'll give you a price, you pay for it there, and then you'll, we'll give you a template, a spreadsheet template that you would put the first name and the last name, the email address of every employee that you wanted this training. So don't buy more seats than what you've got names for because we're going to take that entire spreadsheet and put that information and basically enroll them manually. So they'll all get an email saying that, you know, their class is ready and, and they can go ahead and, and take it. And um, they take the, the, the class, they take the test, and they get their certification and it's all done easy peasy. Um, when we get the spreadsheet, we want to give ourselves one business day to get that manually uh, set up. So, um, you know, if we get this up tomorrow and you send a spreadsheet tomorrow, you know, I can't promise you, you're going to, uh, have your employees enrolled until, until sometime Monday. So basically what he's telling you, don't do this when you have everybody in the room ready to take the test or in some type of a meeting, you're going to have to do this in advance, do this, and then you can give them the, the link at any point in time after that. So I uh, just got to do just a little tiny, tiniest bit of planning there. But if you want to do, if you want to do a one off, you know, I mean, you can still buy the class, you know, one seat at a time, the way that, that it's is there now for, for the 39 and take it immediately. If you've got one person wants to take it immediately or, you know, got a real small company, then that would be the most logical way to do it. Just, just, buy them one at a time and, and take it at that instant if you want to. Okay, sounds good. So, Tom, you have another training that you're going to be putting out there, right? Yes. We've been talking about a professional house cleaner training, and we're working really hard on that. And we had a computer blow up today that set us back a little bit, but there's a lot of work to this and we've got a lot of material and the material we put together for a lot of years, but we want to curate this down in a way where it, it, it's going to be good and most useful. And um, what we really want to do is, is address everything that a professional house cleaner needs to know or should know to perform at a professional level. Uh, we define professionalism as the skill, good judgment, and behavior that is expected from a person who is trained to do a job well. Um, a professional understands what to do, how to do it, and why they are doing it. And the why is a big part of this. You know, uh, there's a lot of psychological studies that people will work a lot harder. They'll, 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 they'll be more agreeable. They're, they're more persuadable. Uh, you just get better outcomes if you know why you're doing something. So, a big part of a professional is just, you know, I can read the instructions and follow them, but if I really don't understand why the instructions are telling me what they're telling me, then, you know, my the likelihood that I'm going to do that consistently and do it as, as diligently as well as I should be is, is, is lacking. And you saw some of this in the training that, that we did for those of you who took the COVID-19 training that you know, we try to get some into the science, into the whys behind it, because once you understand the why, you start feeling like, you know, I'm not really going through the motions, but I really, um, you know, doing something with meaning and purpose. So, you know, my observation is there are a lot of people who clean homes, but many are not professional house cleaners. If you're cleaning a home, that doesn't necessarily make you a professional. So the class that we're putting together is to deliver the information in, in, in a way that, that that's actionable and usable. So if for, for the people who, who work in your organizations, they will see their job as something much more than just doing a task. They will see themselves as 
as being on the front line of defense and, and, and healthcare. They'll understand what hygienic cleaning is. They'll understand uh, science and chemistry behind the products they'll use. They'll understand pathogens. They'll understand you know, the materials, the surfaces that are in the house from the wood floors to the uh, stone countertops and how to treat and handle those and understand their equipment and how that's to be used and needs to be maintained. They'll understand safety in a much broader context than just talking about, you know, protecting yourself from, 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 you know, infectious disease. We'll be talking about all the other ways that one can, can, can get hurt and, and, and harm can happen in, in, in the house cleaning world and, and how to protect ourselves and to protect our clients and to protect the, the environment as a whole. It's going to be a seven class program. It's going to cover what a house cleaning professional, what a, what a house cleaning professional should know. Each of these classes will end with a knowledge check, which is a way of just kind of confirming that you understand the seminal points, the points that you really need to understand from 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 that class. And if you didn't score well, you could you have the option of going back and watching the class, you know, again and, until. You're, you're comfortable with the knowledge check. Once all the classes are complete, you will uh, be able to then take the uh, the final test, and that's how you would learn earn your uh, certification of completion. We're going to be launching this uh, the week of of uh, May fourth, so we're about a week out. Uh, Tom, uh, I've got a couple of questions for you here. Um, so you say that each class ends with a knowledge check. Uh, is that like a quiz? That is a quiz. It's That's like a fancy word for a quiz. Yes. Okay. Um, so, is can you tell me what what's not going to be included in this professional house cleaner training? Well, you know, we're not going to get a whole lot into commercial cleaning. We're not going to get into that at all. So, we're not going to be talking about stripping and waxing floors or um, any of you know, the, 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 the issues that, that, that commercial cleaning contractors would get into. We're not going to be talking about, you know, restoration work. We're not going to be talking about, you know, hazardous, you know, uh, you know, material cleanup. What we're going to be talking about primarily is what you need to know to be a professional in the world where you're doing maintenance cleans in, 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 in people's homes space that people live, sleep, age, you know, bathe and, and, and eat in. That's what we're going to be focusing on, cleaning Mrs. Jones's house every other week. And, you know, it's going to be more than just removing soil from a surface. It's going to be all of the, uh, the science and the knowledge and the things that you need to know behind that. So, you know, we've done a lot of training in this area in the past. And once people have this knowledge, they see their jobs in a completely different way. They see themselves as professionals and, and providing a level of value that's much greater than just picking up at, in somebody's house that, that, that didn't feel like doing it themselves. So a lot of you have heard me talk about matter, meaning and measure that if you want your employees to be engaged and to stay with you for a long time, you have to have these three things. They have to feel like they matter. They have to feel like they are um, providing some um, value, that there's meaning in the work that they're doing, and there needs to be some type of measure. So you can see that this training is going to offer all three of those things, right? Matter, meaning, and measure. Um, well, I have a couple more questions, Tom. One of the things that um, people ask about all the time is um, um, they're, they're, they're curious about this and they worry about this when they think about training. Are you going to talk about like the right kind of vacuum or what kind of cleaning product should be used or any of that kind of stuff that might be in conflict with things that they're using in their individual companies? No, we will talk about pros and cons. I mean, this very few things out there that don't have merit you know it's it's you know product fitting the situation you know vacuum cleaners you know, you've got upright vacuum cleaners you got canister vacuum cleaners you got backpack vacuum cleaners and in the right situation you know which is the best vacuum cleaner well that depends you know what type of space you're you're you're, you're using the vacuum cleaner in and what your scope of work is and 
you know, your team composition. It, it depends on a lot of things. So we'll be talking about the pros and cons and what fits where, but it's not prescriptive. We're not saying that you want to use these cleaning products or these cleaning products are bad or this is the, you know, we don't get into brands of equipment. We would talk about styles, but even then it's a matter of, of, you know, the problem that you're, 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 you're fixing or you're addressing the, the, the scope of work. Okay, cool. Um, we've got a few questions, but the big question is cost. You have cost right now? No, we don't. don't sorry. Have we okay, haven't. Sorry. No cost yet. It's going to start on Monday. Um, I better not, get your That's yeah, Monday right week, now. not not tomorrow. That was 5 4. Oh, yeah, May 4th. Sorry, guys. Yeah. So we got a week and a couple of days. You got 10 days, right? And we'll have an answer for that soon. And, um, and here's, kind of, here's kind of the thing for this, though. It's, you know, it takes. It takes work on our end to administer these classes, even when it's kind of online. I mean, it is online, but a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen with an online course. You know, there's folks who forget their password or can't get, you know, their, their email gets messed up or gets spammed out or um, we, spend, we spend a lot of time, you know, so, so supporting this. And this is going to be a more substantial program. It's going to be a longer program. Um, but it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be an awesome program, too. And we've done a lot of cool things over the years. But this is, this is, this is going to be epic. Do you have any details, Tom, on how long each class will last and when they're going to be offered, how they're going to be offered? Can you give more detail on that? It's, there's some confusion there. I, I'm confused, too. Yeah, um, each class is, is, is going to be like a module in and of itself, um, probably in the ballpark of an hour on average. Some have more material than others. And seven isn't an exact hard number either. We're going to be spending a lot of time. You see the weekends coming up. And it's really fun working on stuff like this because <laughs> you don't have other stuff. Some of this might shift around a little bit. Um, but you don't have to take all seven classes at once and you don't even really even have to finish a whole class at once. You can watch to whatever extent that you want to and stop, go do something else and come back. I mean, there's no time limit. Once you, uh, once you sign up for, for the program, you can take it at whatever pace you want to take it. Uh, uh, Leslie says, absolutely a lot of work, charge appropriately. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. Thank uh, Sherry, or maybe Cherry, says, will she be able to take the class on her own time? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, can, I, can tell you, I can tell you this from a pricing standpoint. I promise you it's gonna be, gonna be a value. I promise you that. If you look at the amount of material we're providing per dollar or the hours worth of training per dollar, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a value. Yeah, 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 of course, absolutely. Um, one thing that, um, a, a reminder, that Tom is one of the authors of the um, House Cleaning Technician book and had a significant role in creating the House Cleaning Technician program, the HCT program that you hear a lot about. Um, that So just so you know that this isn't just information this is the real information coming from the real people that created the programs initially it's just trying to get it out to a much wider audience um in, in a much bigger way that that's the big plan then yes, we're, we're, doing, we're, we're doing we're doing at least two things here yes one objective is to get it out in a, in a lot bigger way um we're also the HCT manual of that program is kind of the first iteration. And you ever do something, and after you do it, you go back and look at it and say, gee, if I ever was going to do this again, I would change this, 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 and this. Well, that's kind of what we're, we're, we're doing here. This is the iteration of these are all of the things that we had it to do differently. These are the things that we could do to make it better. So that's kind of what we're doing here. This is, this is going to be... This is going to be tighter. This is going to be more to the point. This is going to be, you know, it's so going to be, it's going to be So good. it's just like everything else that we do. Anybody that's taken foundations can tell you foundations too. 
doesn't look like foundations three, doesn't look like foundations four, doesn't look like foundations five, because every iteration is improved upon. And it's always the newest up-to-date information. So that makes sense to me that it's not going to be the same program that was originally uh, created how many years ago? Oh, I don't know, seven, eight, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. Of course, there's new information that needs to go out. So uh, that, that's part yeah. of what's going to be coming out. In, in, um, in, in my, my favorite example of that, a really good example is, you know, like, like Made Central, like, like, our, like our software that started like over 20 years ago as a simple access database. And we had major iterations where we, okay, let's do it again. And these are all the things that we want to fix. Let's do it again. And these are things we can make better. And suffice it to say, it looks very much different now than it did when, when we started. Yeah, absolutely. Way, way different. Uh, so we got a couple questions here, Tom. Mary says, oh, shoot, I think I goofed signing up for the COVID cert certification class. I want to register an employee so she can get the certification. Not exactly sure what you goofed up on, Mary. Let us know. Maybe give us a little bit more information there. Um, Bridget, go ahead and take my money. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Bridget, I, I'm liking your sense of humor. <laughs> uh, Leslie, so is this best for employees or owners, Tom? Um, she is an HCT certified and pretty educated on this, and, but she's always willing to learn. And, and this is Leslie Field, so you know she. Yeah. Uh, Leslie. Yeah. yeah. If you if you've taken the HCT class recently, and you know, there'll be there'll be some 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 new stuff here or maybe maybe more that's true to some degree but to a bigger degree you'll be seeing some stuff in a, in a, in a presented a different way in a different light that that might resonate differently um but we're designing it for technicians the idea is that that hct in its current format is expensive it's a two full day class where you have to pull your technicians out of the field um, until just very recently you had to like travel and do it face to face. Um, you have to, you have to pay separately for an exam and you have to pay every year to keep by uh, the, your, your certification, you know, your membership to IICRC currents, which basically means you can say that you're certified as an individual year after year as a company. If you want to say that you have IICRC certified, you know, technicians, you have to be a certified company and pay extra for that. You don't have to do any of that with, with, with us. We're just trying to make it, we want to make this available to the technicians because at the end of the day, those are the people that are actually doing the work. And if the technicians don't have this information, how can they be professional health cleaners if they don't have the knowledge to be professional health cleaners? And, and again, don't forget that ever since we have all been working together, this is Tom, Derek, myself, Troy, our partner, uh, since we have all been working together, we have always been focused on professionalizing the industry, getting this information into the hands of the people that are doing the work so that the industry as a whole is improved, not individual people. We, we are going to be better. We're going to make more money. The whole industry is going to be better. The more we can all get on the same page, be talking about the same things, um, knowing how to do things. Everybody knows how to do things all in the professional manner. So, and that isn't just about, you know, what, what is the right vacuum? What is the right, you know, should I use Clorox cleanup or should I use fantastic, you know, uh, some of those things matter, but for different reasons. So we, we definitely need to get that information out there. Um, Leslie says, I love it. My employees are in. I will pay for the time. So time is a thing. Yeah. Time. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, now that I think about it, awesome, Leslie. I didn't even think about this, but PPP money right there, right? Now, this is a good way. In my mind, this is a good way to spend PPP money. So give people a chance to get some education, something that's going to improve who they are, how they can do their jobs better, and they can earn more money. We can all earn more money as our whole industry raise, raises. Yeah, thumbs up. So, yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot of math, and we don't really know 
to what extent any of us are going to qualify for those monies to be forgiven as a grant at the end of the eight week period. But it's awful hard not to have a chunk of it forgiven. It's just a matter of what percentage. So you never, you know, even if you don't get 100% forgiven as a grant, you're never going to have an opportunity to train your people as cheaply as you you, you will for this eight week period. When you get your Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. We should have thought more about that. We should even have more training, Tom, <laughs> because this is the right time. I am working. I'm trying. Yeah. And really, he, he is working, you guys. He is working hard. Um, is, is there any other training that you guys need for your people that we can create right now during this? We have all of this stuff already in our bank. All we have to do is put it together. If you guys have something that you need, let us know. We know you've got eight weeks that you need to be filling time. How can we help? What do you need from us? We already have it all. We are already training people and have been for years. Don't forget we run cleaning companies too, right? So we really already have all of this stuff. Happy to pass it on to you guys. Let us know what you need. Let us know what you want. And we'll do our best to get that out there fast. You see, Tom is working really, really hard. So let us know. Um, if For those of you that are not friends of mine on Facebook, please reach out and um, friend me. And I will be happy to have conversations with you about anything else that you can think about as well. All right, Tom, it's 607 over there. Yeah. This was a half hour call today, wasn't it? Yeah, was it? No, I was you just said half hour. Ah, I should try. I said did we you, did, you, did you have anything that you wanted to share, Liz, or are we good? Um, no, I think we're good. Train the trainer. Okay, we do have an excellent train the trainer program, Bridget. Excellent. Okay, I'll figure out how to get that out to you guys. Absolutely. I do have some coaching and consulting opportunities that are coming up. Um, I will talk to you guys about that on Monday. If you know that you need certain types of things, let me know. Um, I have some openings. You have all heard about our uh, mastermind accountability groups. I do have some opportunities in, along those lines that are a little bit different, little twist that I'm going to share on Monday. So reach out. If you have any questions, if you have any more ideas, let me know. Kim, we don't have a, a price yet on the course. Uh, Tom, any ideas when you might know about a price? He's worked putting the program together right now is the problem, Tim. It, we're not too many days out. I mean, obviously, we'll have a price before we go live. It will, it'll be a value. It'll be affordable. Um, we really don't have enough details to, to responsibly even answer that question at the moment. Uh, we've got we've got some work to do. I'm sorry. I just can't make up a number. I'm, I'm going to let Liz, you can get it. Liz, maybe we can share our disks assessments one day and kind of yeah. explain all of this. It. It's just... I'm not capable of giving a number without more data and more. Explain it, Liz. <laughs> yeah. So I think maybe what we should do is have some disc training. That might be a really useful thing to do. Um, a, a disc is really helpful in dealing with your employees. Uh, yes, on um, train the trainer. Biz culture dummy down a bit from Liz's. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. There's tons of culture programs that are super, super simple too. You can uh, make them as crazy as you want. Uh, Book of Lizisms. Yeah, I do got a lot of them, don't I? Yeah, I know. Um, Carmelina says, I have some employees that are very good workers. However, their English is limited. I wish I could incorporate them. We don't have a lot of Spanish offerings, unfortunately. Um, need to need to think a little bit. We, on we, we, we need to make we need to make that a priority. I mean, it's not going to happen next week. Um, I just am I having yeah, a hard that's time. Not, I was trying to get it in English. It's yeah. already a struggle. So let us get stuff out in English. Yeah. We'll think about Spanish too. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe somebody out there has some resources that maybe could help us with some of that, you know, because uh, we got anybody want to partner up with us in some way or shape yeah. or form. Let us know. How can you help us with the Spanish piece? Uh, translation so, apps. Yeah. They're just so not reliable for 
we've tried to do a little bit with the translation apps and have not had good luck with that, Leslie. Uh, yeah, they're not they're not accurate. People complain about them. Uh, anyway, keep thinking, y'all. Let us know what you can do. Call here's us. Modern, here's moderncleaning.com, and this is you know you click here to to you know register for for the class in its current form. You're paying for each class at this point. We'll have this reworked here over the weekend. We'll post, uh, you know, messages in Facebook when, when we have all of that ready to go. If you're interested in the bulk purchasing, here's uh, cleaning business today. This is uh, register for our uh, newsletter there. And here's our coronavirus download secret page. I pasted earlier in the... Um, in the um, comments here, how how to get to the ISSA page, but that's down here, bump, 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 somewhere. ISSA COVID nineteen resources. I'll put that in there again since we were talking about the GBAC training. Anything else? Sorry. I'll hit, I'll hit you up in group, Kelly. We're going to talk a little bit there anyway. So that sounds that sounds good. Thanks for that info. Okay, you guys. That's Thank it. you I'm so good much. Fishing. You guys have a great weekend. Remember, take care of yourselves. Get some rest. This is uh, this is a long race, but we'll, uh, we'll see you Monday at 5, okay? And if you are working, relaxing work, right, like <laughs> we like to do. All right. Talk to you all later. Bye. Bye-bye.